God calls you blessed. Uh, the definition for the word blessed means having the ability. Tastes good. You say, Oh, I love it. 
I, I just love it. Y'all know, y'all always talk about food, but I ain't gonna talk about food today. I'm not gonna talk about food. Y'all know my favorite thing I love, right? Oh my God, y'all know me so well. Fried chicken with jerk on the side, okay. All right, but we're not gonna talk about that. But you get that fuzzy feeling, but we wanna go a little deeper. Can we go a little deeper today as we're talking about love? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, we're gonna go a little deeper today. Look at your neighbor on the other side and say, are you ready? Are you ready? Amen, amen. The title of our message today is Walking in God's Love. Walking in God's Love. And we're going to use the scripture. First of all, the foundational scripture is going to come from Ephesians, the fifth chapter, one and two, and it's going to be in the Amplified. And it reads, Therefore, become imitators of God, which is to copy him and follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father. Verse 2 says, and walk continually in love. Say that after me. Continually, continually. In, love. in love. And it said that is value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others. I want you to really pay attention to those words. Unselfishly seeking the best for others. And there's a reason why he says unselfish, because a lot of times we think about ourselves, 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 and it's selfish because God is a God of people. We always got to think of others and how can we be a blessing and how can we love and how can we, you know, um, um, help others. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God slain for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. Notice that Paul says as Christ has also loved us. Christ has also loved us. Amen. Now Jesus knew his father and he knew that he was loved and, and uh, he was able to love as his father loved because he walked in his father's love. He knew he was loved. He saw his father, the miracle, because of his love, the miracles that took place that God used him to do. He saw those and he was very privy to all of this going on. Follow me. And, and, and if you follow his example, we... We need to, as Paul says, to believe the same thing that Jesus believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that we love God as well. And loving and also believing. And we're going to get into that a little bit more. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 37, it says that Jesus replied to him, you shall love the Lord your God with what? All, All your heart and with what? And with all your soul and with what? And with all your mind. That's with everything that is within you. Everything, every fiber of your being. He says, you have to love the Lord. So walking in love is first and foremost a belief. Established in one's heart that empowers and motivates the believer to live as Christ did. It's a belief that's established. It has to be established in your heart that will motivate you to love as Christ love. See, it's one thing sometimes, you know, when we want to love and do things for people out of a different motivation. Is somebody watching me? Or, or I'm going to get a reward if I... Yeah. Yes, I love, I love Sister Deborah Trotter. Yes, yes, I love her. But is it motivated by the right thing? I want to love as Christ because Christ loved me. I saw what he did and I see what he done for me. I know what he's done for me. So I believe and therefore that is established in me to love so I can be like my father. Do we get that? Now you understand that that chair is holding you up because you believe that every Sunday when you come into the house, that the chairs are going to hold you up. I don't think anyone in this ministry have ever sat in a chair and fell. So you believe. So it's with love. So it's with love. 
I believe what my father did. He did it for me. Amen? We're going to dig a little deeper. We need to follow Jesus' example, making it a what? A lifestyle and believing what he believed and living in that belief. I believe what he did. Now I must walk in it and I must live it. That has to be the only motivator. Because he did for me. Because I believe the Father. And therefore I do. I believe, therefore I do. I believe, therefore I do. I believe, therefore I do. Any other motivation, you're going to fall. It's not going to stand. There's a, a scripture that says, just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I should not be moved. You got to be so steadfast, unmovable, that nothing can sway you when the wind comes. If that person hurts your feeling, I don't love them no more. Because your love cannot be established upon what other people do. When you believe God, you're going to love anyway. Regardless of what you do, for me, to me, how, whatever, I'm going to love anyway. And that is what my actions will show. Jesus understood the power of a belief that was established in one's heart. It has to be established in your heart. So you see that love and belief goes hand in hand. So when you think of Valentine's Day, and that one come, they bring you flowers, they bring you candy, they bring you chocolate, you know, and all of that. You get that fuzzy, warm feeling. Ooh, he brought me chocolate. Yeah. He brought me flowers. Oh, he really loved me. But we're talking about a love that goes even deeper than that. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about that love, you know, because I love my chocolate and, you know, passing those exactly the chocolate I love, you know what I like, but I'm not talking about, that. that's all well and good, but we're talking about a lifestyle as unto Christ that is established in our hearts. And see, when we talk about believing, when you say, when he tell you that you can move a mountain by your declaration, by what you say, Proverbs is filled with wisdom and, and, and taking on God's word and getting it into your heart. For as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. So if I make a decision that, Lord, I'm going to love as you love because I believe what you did for me, that you loved me so much, and that is established in my heart, that is what I shall do. What you believe in your heart frames your life. And what you're doing today, how you're living today, it frames your life. It frames your life. Why is it so important that it has to be established in your heart? Why is it so important that it goes beyond that fuzzy, fuzzy feeling? Because anybody can knock you off the mark. See, as Christians, if we come to be a blessing, to tell people about what the love of God has done, the Great Commission, and if I come and witness to you, and I am not considerate of your feelings, Anything you do can throw me off the mark. Well, she ain't won't got it. I ain't talking to her. She ain't, I ain't got I ain't got time for her. We are easily to get in our feelings. But I'm telling you, y'all, it's time to grow up. And we're gonna start in the church house. How about that? Let's start right here in the church house today. You know, it's time to grow up. We, we, we're so touchy-feely. You didn't let me. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't, and we get in our feelings. But the love of God goes beyond that. Because it doesn't matter. I love you. I love you. But you're not going to take away the established love that God has placed in me. Because the love, I'm looking at Christ. I'm looking at Christ. So whatever you do, it's not going to move me. Y'all, I'm talking to myself too. I know it, it's not easy. Because when people step on your toes, it's so easy to say, well, you know what? I ain't going to deal with them no more. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to deal with them no more. I don't want nothing to do with them. But that's not the love of God. Because then your love is established upon what they do, how they treat you, how they make you feel. And so what they do will determine what I'm going to do. You, you, you get that? It's going to determine your, no, and it should not. That should not be, because that's not what God did. When he sent his son, he looked down and said, oh my God, this is a crazy generation. Look at these people. They don't love me. Look at what they're doing. I am going to, son, come back home. I, you know, I, 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 let's abort this whole mission. They don't deserve it. 
When you get in a place where you feel that a person deserves your love. No, it's not about them, it's about That's right. you. When the Bible talks about love is patient, love is kind, love is long, it's something that you have to do. And it's anything about them, they have to take that for themselves. But when you make a decision that I am going to be kind no matter how ugly you treat me, wow. no matter how bad you, I'm going to be long-suffering. That don't feel good, right? When you got to suffer, nobody want to suffer. But God, and he has poured this into our hearts. We can do this. The ingredients is already in us. We have to make a decision. We have to make a decision. Let's go on. In the Corinthian church, y'all, y'all know Paul was having a time with them people. They, they, they was doing some of everything. And Paul got to the, to the place of, he said, you know, I can't tell the difference between the world and the people in the church. You know, but Paul knew that he did, first of all, he did not judge them or demean them for their carnal behavior. He knew and understood that they were living from the belief in their heart. I want you to follow me. We're talking about love, but we're talking about belief because they go hand in hand. They, they, they were acting according to the belief in their heart. So whatever they did, they believed and they walked in it. Paul didn't threaten them, but he began to tell them about the love of Christ and what God had done for them. You, you know, love began love. And he just began to talk to them and tell them all that God has done for them. Because see, you can't threaten people to love out of fear, because fear will motivate their behavior, right. but love changes your heart. Yes. Fear motivates your, 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 what change, what motivates your behavior, but we're looking at a, a lifestyle change. And so if you want to be an example of love, then let them see you loving. Love in spite of, I had to throw that in y'all. Love in spite of, get the book, get the book, get the book. <laughs> Love in spite of, amen? amen? I just don't want you to, to, to just live right, but I want you to believe right. I want you to believe because what you believe, that's what you will do. I believe, again, this chair will hold me, so I will sit in that chair, amen? So you got to believe. So in order to love, not the Valentine's Day love, and that's all good, but in order to love as Christ intended, we have to believe what Christ did in loving us. Therefore, we shall do once it's established in our hearts. Amen? Amen. 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 In, in St. John 14, 31, Jesus said, so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly what my Father commanded me to do. Because I love my Father, because as the Father commanded me to do. Because I believe my Father, I will do exactly what the Father commands me to do. Because why? There was an example. Jesus was the great example. Am I correct? Yes. Our Lord did not expect us, he did not expect us to believe that he loved his Father unless he actually did the deeds of his Father. He did the deeds. Was there hard times? Yes. You remember the time he went to pray? You remember the time even on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Can you pray for me, with me, one hour? But he was determined that if no one did, and if no one followed him, that he would, because he, what? Believed. Because he believed. Because he believed. So it's more than how you make me feel and how you treat me. If I believe God, I must do as God has called me to do in loving. It has nothing to do with what you do. You can spit on me, you can treat me. I mean, you can treat, you can talk about me. And <laughs> you can curse me out. But no, I'm a vessel of honor. God has called me to love, and I have made a decision that I'm going to love in spite of. Amen? Amen. I'm going to love in spite of. So, with that being said, I want you to understand that loving expressed is in obeying Him. 
is in obeying him. Now, I want you to know, I, I, I understand, y'all, this world is full of mean people. This world is full of people that don't mean you well. If you look at the news, it's very disheartening. And, and you like, Lord, you want to be a hermit and stay in your house sometime. You know, when you see things happening to children and people that no one deserve, you know, to be taken out before the time or, you know, children, that really tugs on my heart. Things that are happening to children, it really tugs on your heart. I remember um, years ago when they questioned my hus husband for something that he did not do and they took him. Um, and, then, and the cops came and picked him up and it took him for questioning. I remember having such a hatred for cops. A hatred, I thank God for Pastor Strong. She was right there with me. She had, she helped us and I'm, I'm like, Lord, because I didn't know what to do. We was early in our marriage. I didn't know what to do. All I knew is my husband was not guilty and why y'all doing this to my husband? I think my husband is a pretty great man, y'all. That's just me, but again, he's my husband. I think he's a pretty um, upstanding guy, full of integrity. And so I'm like, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to him? And so that took me a long time to get over that. A long time. I hated cops. I had such a hatred for many years because of that. And I didn't even want to talk about it because I get angry. I go to cry. I didn't want to talk about it. And I don't think he really realized how much it really affected me. Because I said, wait a minute. There are so many crazy people out here. Why the good guy? Why my husband? Why my husband? And so that's a road that I had to, to, to go through and say, Lord, teach me Amen. your ways. Help me to love them because I'm being controlled because of what they did. So I'm allowing it to control me. Right. I, and so I had to work on me. I had to work on me because the love of God has to be established in your heart. In Matthew 24 now, it talks about the end times. Matthew 24 talks about the end times and things that will be happening. And I just want to name just a few, and we're not going to, we don't have to go there. It talks about many things that will happen. It says many people will be easily offended. It said that hatred will run rampant in the earth. It says that lawlessness will increase and the love of people will grow cold. Are we in the end times, y'all? Oh we don't have time. We, we got to get this thing right. I don't know about you, but I want to go home. I want to go home to my father. How I many you know we're strangers? We're just passing through. We, we, we're not making this our final resting place. Amen? And so when the Bible has already told us this stuff is going to happen, and it's happening now. It's happening now. If you look at the news, okay, yeah, yeah, we're in the end times. We're, we're in the end times. It's happening now, y'all. But that cannot and will not and should not Change your assignment to love as Christ has commanded us to love. Because remember, it's for you, just like forgiveness is for you. Sometimes it's hard to forgive someone that treats you bad. You're like, nah, I ain't gonna give them that. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna forgive. But you, you're holding around that, that, that torch that's burning, you know? Let it go. Forgiveness is for you. Yes. To love is for you. Yes. And it has to be established in your heart. Yes. Okay, uh, okay. There are many places in the Bible that talks about love. And I'm telling you, I know it's, it's not easy to hear. And, you, and, and, and many years, I thought this was just impossible. You know, I know I have to believe the Bible. And okay, Lord, you said in, um, in Matthew that I got to love my neighbor as I love myself. But my neighbor is not my, you know, my, you know, my best friend. So why I got to love my neighbor? You know, why, why I got to love? I don't I, I didn't understand it. And then when he got to love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. What? Okay. All right. That's a lot. I, I, okay. Come on. Come on. Ain't that a lot? Okay. For years, I said, okay, that's a lot. So you hear me say to, um, I, um, in the beginning when I say share with your family, your friends, and your en enemies. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Because they need to hear the word of God too. But it starts with you. Yeah. Okay? And it's established in my heart that I'm going to love you. I thank God that I don't have any enemies. But y'all yeah, can't. It's just a lot. It's a lot. It right. is a lot. And then, and then and in Proverbs, hatred stirs up conflict. But love conquers over all wrong. Love conquers over all wrong. First, in, in Proverbs 3. Three and four, it says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Then you will win favor 
and a good name in the sight of God and man. And man. Okay? For John 420 says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Wow. Mm -hmm. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have seen. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little further. Ephesians 4 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bury with one another in love. Oh my God. Okay, we stepping on some people's toes. Just, just, just look straight. Don't say nothing. <laughs> First Corinthians 16 4. Do everything in love. Well, just some things though. Do everything in love. Now I'm going to tell you something. And I, I don't want nobody to jump on me for this, but. We spend so much time trying, to, time trying to make ourselves happy. If we would spend more time trying to make others happy and sowing good seeds, then God will bring a harvest into your life of you being happy. That's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, okay, I got some people. Okay, all right, I got some people with me. Do y'all get that? Yeah. When I saw that, I said, ooh, ooh, no, ouch. Because, you know, you just like, Lord, I gotta take care of me first. And if I take care of me, I then I can take care of somebody else. No. That's God's job. Yeah. So if I love you, if I take care of you, if I have five dollars and I ain't eat today, I'm gonna give you. The Lord said, "Give that to give that." The elder Sherry needs needs something to eat. Give her that five dollars. I'm gonna give her that five dollars because I know God is gonna do what? Take care of me. Uh huh. So when I saw that, I said, "Okay, Lord, I get it. I get it. We are to live unselfish lives. Sometimes we want to hold." To them, no, no, I ain't gonna do that. No, I ain't gonna give because that person this and that, and I gotta pay my bills. God understand God. You're not giving God an opportunity to work in your life. You be obedient and do what God tells you to do, and God will take care of you. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness of that, y'all. I'm a living witness. You may think, oh yeah, Pastor, we got it like that. Now let me tell you, I'm a living witness. There are times you give outside of your lack. And you may say, well, that don't make sense. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. I'm a living witness that God takes care of us royally when we're obedient. Amen? Amen. I want you to know that God can do more for you in two seconds than you can do for yourself in a lifestyle. Amen. In a lifetime. Right. Right. He, he can do in two seconds. Right. He can do more for you. But do you trust him? Yes. Will you obey Mm. Where will where, where, where you be obedient to what God says? And you know, a lot of times we look at our situations and we say, no, I, uh -uh, I can't. I can't. No, no, no. I got to do this. I got to do that. God said, I didn't ask you. Mm. You're trying to make your own way. You're trying to make it happen. When, it, when you finish doing your thing, you're trying to make your own way. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to wait. And, and when you finish and be obedient, then I can work on your behalf. Okay, all right. Am I talking to some people in here? Yeah. Oh, God. First John, let's turn. First John 4. First John the 4th chapter, we're going to read 7 through 8 and verse 16. It says, Beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. Ooh, beloved, that's, that's a mouthful. Let us unselfishly, because God is not a selfish God. God is always thinking about us and our cares and how to deliver us and to, to bless us. God is always thinking, and he is an example, right? Beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. Seek the best for one another. See, see, we are so much into looking at our situation that God can't use us to be a blessing for somebody else. When your hands are like this, it's not open so that you can't get nothing in there. Oh my God, okay. For, okay, beloved, let us selfishly, unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. For love is from where? And everyone who loves others and everyone who loves others is born of and knows through personal experience. See, now you're talking about a love that is established and is not contingent upon your feelings and what people do. 
because I gotta love others and love is an action. I'm gonna love others because I am born of God. I know God and I have an experience with him to know that if I be obedient and be a blessing, that God is gonna bless me. He gonna take care of me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at verse 8. The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Ooh. Does not and never did know him. Ouch. For God is love. He is the originator of love. And it is an, an ending attribute of his nature. Of his nature. Of his nature. I heard someone say, um, Actually, it was Joyce Myers, and she said, you know, I always go and I buy gift cards, $10 gift cards, and I make sure I always have gift cards on me so that if everyone in needs, I'll give one or two just to help out. Because when you uh, can do it of being a blessing, you want to always have. There are times when I have people that may come up to me and they ask me because I don't carry a lot of cash on me, you know, credit card, you know, so I don't carry a lot of cash. And it, it's not a good feeling if there's a need. You say, oh, I don't have it. Man, I don't have it. And so I said, no, I got to do better. I got to do better. Look at your name and say, we got to do better. <laughs> so Joyce Myers said she carried around them $10 gift card. I said, let me go and get me some $10 <laughs> gift cards. Let me get some. They go quick, but I can I did it one time, y'all. So I'm like, I got to I got to real. But yes, you 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 gonna be mindful to be a blessing because God is gonna bless me. God is blessing me. I told you about in the very beginning um, of our ministry. I told you about my husband made a decision to pay double time. The only reason why I'm mentioning that now because I see that he's still doing it and I didn't recognize it, you know? And I said, God, I thank you. I thank you that no, I, we don't miss a beat. And I'm not saying this as a, to glorify us or what I'm saying that because of obedience, God had placed that in his heart to do from the very beginning. He had to help me because I was like, wait a minute, Pastor, you, baby, you're going to pay double time? I didn't understand it, y'all. I, I'm just being honest. Can we be honest? Mm -hmm. I was like, baby, um, ain't that a little bit much? Um, that, that, oh, you, you look at the numbers and you be, okay, this is a little bit much. You know, I didn't understand it. I'm just being very honest, but I thank God that he was steadfast. He was like, no, write the check. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. All right. Okay. But we never skipped the beat. Our lights never came off. We never was hungry. God took care of us. We have more than enough more than enough and I thank God for that and I say that because don't let money hem you up don't let money hem you up if you are always I gotta make money or oh, I gotta make this money over here oh I gotta make this money over here God said okay when you're done when you're done running okay when are we gonna trust God when are we gonna trust God when are we gonna trust him God can do more for you in two seconds than you can do in a lifetime. In a lifetime, yeah. you do. I, I'm not saying. I, now let me say this: You ain't got no job, and you, you run. You like, Lord, I need money. I need money, and I don't feel like working. I don't want to do. I feel a little bit here and there. Now I'm not playing. I'm not doing that, right? We ain't going. To, you needs to get a job. Get that, oh, come on, Candace. You this white girl. Get that. He go, yeah, you gotta, because God want to see what you're going to do. You draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. What are you doing? If there is a need, meet that need. Do it. But in loving people, you always want to have so that you can be a blessing. Amen. 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 God, John started by clarifying that the believer's ability to love comes from knowing God. Knowing God. Did I read that? Did I read 16? Is up there? Let's read 16. We have come to know by personal observation and experience. We have come to know by personal observation and experience. Experience, God, you deliver me. When I'm obedient, God, you take care of me. Lord God, when you tell me to do this, I do it and you come through for me. So I know for experience and have believed 
with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. God is, love. and the one who abides in, love. abides in God, and God abides continually in him. It's about love, y'all. It's about love. <laughs> Established in your heart and what you would do. Now, Romans says, Romans 5.5, 5, very quickly, Romans 5.5, 5, Paul wants us to know that in order for the, for the believer to believe in that ability to believe in the, oh, let me get it right, to believe God and to love as he said, that comes from knowing God. If you don't know him, remember God is the originator of love. So if you know God, if you experience God, if you observe him, if you know what he's done for you, you can walk in the love, amen, just as Jesus did from his father. Romans 5, 5 says, such hope in God's promises never disappoints us. It never disappoints us. Because God's love has been abundantly poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has, he's given to us. Now, you may say, you know, Pastor, the ability to love that all that love stuff y'all talk about, it's not really in me. I just can't do it. It's it just not in me. You know? It, it, I just can't. I just can't. That person just that really hurt me. I, I can't forgive that boss who just fired me for no reason. I, I just can't. You know? And, and this person, you know, they said that was my friend, Pastor. And then they did me dirty, Pastor. I just can't. You asked me to love? No, I can't. I, I. I, I, I can't. So that you don't understand the established love of Christ. You, you don't understand or you make it a conscious decision that I'm not going to do it. I, I'm not going to, to walk in what God did for me, what Jesus did for me. No, I can't do that. That's just too hard. How many know that we can do all things through Christ and strengthen us. God ain't leaving us out there lonely. He, 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 he said, I'm a near and present help. I am your strength, amen? I want you to look at this. When God says that he loves us, it's a commitment for our well-being. It's an unconditional love that is unrestricted and unlimited. Let's look at those words. Unrestricted means it has no limits. His love has no limits. <laughs> and, and unlimited, it never runs out. It never stops. You may say, well, I've just been a bad person all my life. God, truly, he don't love you no more. He tired of me. He tired of me. Have you heard someone say, I, I, you know, I'm going to come to church when I get myself together. Have y'all heard that before? Yes. Uh, you'll never get there. You'll never get there because you and your own cannot get yourself together. You cannot get yourself together. So often we look to other people that they have to be kind to us and make us feel good. But if that is your agenda, then you miss the whole biblical assignment of love. You got to give me that fun. See, don't get it twisted with Valentine's Day. Now, I'm not going to get I love Valentine's Day. But if that is your only staple of love, you missed it. You missed it because I'm still waiting. If you're waiting for chocolates for Valentine's Day to feel good, chocolates are good, y'all. If you're waiting for flowers on Valentine's Day to feel good, that's all good. You know, you give some people, get jewelry. That's all good, right? It's all good. But if that's the only thing that makes you happy and loving, then that means the love of God is not established in your heart. The Bible says in Corinthians, being kind, be patient. It says don't envy, don't boast. It says don't be proud, don't be easily angered. It says keep no record of wrong. That was, the, that was one of my big ones that I did, I thought was impossible. Keep no record of wrong. And it says don't delight in evil. So it's you, you be patient. No, I'm waiting for them to be kind to me, then I'll be. No, no, you be patient. You be kind. You take no record of wrong. You don't be boastful. Don't be proud. 
you. It's the work that you, so it has to be personal. And I do it because the love of God is established in my heart. I do it because God loves me. I know what God has done for me. I do it because I am his example. I do it because I believe that God loves me. I do. Don't negate your assignment. Don't negate the assignment. The assignment that God has put out there for us to love cannot, will not change. Cannot, will not change. But I'm here to tell you that God is able to strengthen you to do. I tell people all the time, it's God's job to change your heart. It's his job to change your heart. You know, when you commit and submit to God, that thing that seemed impossible won't be impossible. Because God began to change your heart one degree at a time. Have you ever heard someone say, you know, I used to smoke, child, and all of a sudden the taste just was out of my mouth. I don't know what happened. I just didn't want a cigarette no more. I just didn't want to drink anymore. This was impossible. But I told you when it says keep no record of wrong, I had a record on y'all, Pastor, y'all. I had a record. I did, I did, and I kept it in my phone. I had a journal. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I had a record. I had a record, you know, because, you know, as you get a little older, you forget. And so I didn't want to forget. I'm, I'm, I'm just, can I just be honest? Okay. I'm just being very honest. And I did not want to forget. But if something came up, it was like an ace cop. Bam! See what you did? Uh huh. 1919. Yes. You see what you did? At 234. Yes. PM. That's what you did. Yes, yes, yes. I, I did. I, I kept it. A running record in my phone. And so, it just so happened that Pastor, during the pandemic, he said, We're going to do, do a teaching on love. And each of the ministers had to pick one of the love and do a teaching on it. Love is, yes. And how come I got the one keep on record? <laughs> they took all the ones. But I said, okay, all right, Lord, I, I, I'm going to see this because to me it's still very impossible. I just can't, you know, keep her. I got to. Lord, if you made my mind good, I would remember, but because I forget, I need to write it down. So I had all kind of excuses. And I remember as I was studying that, the Lord began to minister to me. Ooh, Lord have mercy. And I said, Lord, I had to pull on an incident where God had to deal with me with someone years ago. And they mistreated me. They disrespected me very badly. And, and I had to deal with that. And I remember that feeling of hatred. I hated this person. And that feeling was so uncomfortable for me. Uncomfortable, uncomfortable. I don't, I don't know how people could, I, it was uncomfortable for me. And so I went to God and I said, God, if you be God, I need you to take this hatred away and I wanna love that person with such a great love. And I went on a fast and I prayed and I said, Lord, you can do it, you can do it. Because it's about me, I, this is controlling me because it's eating away at me. And so three months time, it changed, and I knew it because how I felt about the person. And even if I see this person today, you would think that she is like, oh my God, I love her to death. But I pulled on that experience, and I said, God, if you did that, and you think about all the instances in between, God, you delivered, you came through, you healed that. When the doctor was trying to say things about my grandbaby, and we prayed, and God, Matt, you healed, you touched, you delivered, God, you start thinking about it, you start reminiscing. And bring up, God, you did this, you did this, you did this. When the enemy tried to take my life years ago and I had to have blood transfusion, I didn't have much blood in my body. God, you brought me back. God, you, I, and you just begin. So God, yes. absolutely, you can help me keep no record of wrong. But see, you gotta come to that place where you are established in doing the right thing. I wasn't there, so I had to say, God, you gotta help me. God, I need you to come through for me. Yeah. God, I, 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 I want to do what you say. So if you have a love for God, yeah. and Lord, I want to be obedient. Yeah. This thing that seemed impossible, you put it in the word for a reason. So that means that I can do it because you said the love of God, you pour in our heart, God, and that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. God, I don't want to walk with this. The big step was 
to erase that, to erase my, the file. <laughs> it was a big file, y'all. But I erased the file. And it was because the love of God was established in my heart, because I love God. So that, the love of God superseded my feelings and the flesh. Remember, there is no good thing in this flesh. That's right. The flesh comes to pull us away from God. So you got to supersede what the flesh wants and do what the word of God says. And so that thing that seemed impossible, it's amazing. You get up here all the time. No, I get up here and I say, God specializes in the impossible. Y'all heard me say that, right? Yeah, yeah. See, it's one thing to say it, but it's another to walk in it. That's it. Yeah. It's another thing to walk in it. It ain't easy. But if I don't have to do this all by myself, I'm not alone, y'all. God is my strength. God is able to change my heart. God is able, whatever it is, whatever may seem impossible, give it to God. That's it. I don't know what it is. That's Everybody, it. it's your personal decision. Give it to God. If you love him, give it to God. Because God is able. And see, that thing is when you give it to God, then you open up. Then you, 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 you open up for him to work. You stand back and say, God, I'll let it go. I let go of that, the file. I erase the file, God. And my mind it can't hold it, so I can't remember it no more. But I let it go. How about there are times now, baby, I'm just putting us all out there, but I know you don't mind. My, he's very transparent. There are times if something may happen and I may not agree with him or if I feel that he wronged me and I found out he was doing the same thing, I go to my father. I gotta talk to him. Hey, father, that's your son. But let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you this. See, this is something that we, I wanna, I, the first thing you want to do is, Lord, show me me. Because I could be very wrong. I could be very humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Lord, I could be very wrong. So, Lord, I ask that you show me me. I'm hurt, and I'm allowing this thing to hurt me. But, Lord God, I could be very wrong. So, I ask you that you show me. Show me where I am being in, in the wrong and erring. And Lord God, your son, I'm going to pray for him. And Lord God, you bring it to his intentions. And Lord God, you deal with the matter. So you say a prayer like that. And immediately, I don't know, he have a, uh, he have a tongue, straight tongue where he can talk to God. You know, I come out of my closet and then I hear my husband say, you know what, I spoke to you wrong. You know, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have spoke to you that way. That was harsh and that was not right. I'm all, I apologize, baby. You okay? He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you feel, you feel bad. But see, a lot of times we don't have that relationship with God and we figure we got to do it. And we're going to tell this man what he did before I forget. <laughs> I got to go and talk to him. And don't we mess it up? Yeah. Don't we mess it up? And see, if you're a woman, I'm talking to my sisters because it is, I know we have what, how many words, baby? 5,000 words in a day? And we got to get those words out. We like to talk. And we like you to listen. Sometimes we got to, this is just me. And go talk to Father. Go talk to my, my daddy, God. I, I got to go talk to my daddy. I got to go talk to my daddy. Yes, we have a lot of words that we have to get out. Oh my God, oh my God. Are y'all learning something today? We're gonna go ahead and get ready to close out. I'm not, I'm halfway through, but that's okay. That's okay. And everything that you do, be mindful that God is watching. Yes. Be mindful that love is a lifestyle. It's not just a fuzzy feeling. Right. Right. It's a lifestyle and it's a commandment for you to do. So what are we gonna do? What are we going to do? Can you stand to your feet? It's important that we understand what God done for us in the very beginning. It's important that we understand the love of God and that we seek to walk and to do. Now, this is not a message where I'm going to call you up and pray for you because it's a decision that you have to make. And so what I want to do is give you the opportunity to talk to God. I want you to begin to talk to God in any, in any area that you say, Lord, I need help. Lord, I don't see how I can do this, but I give it to you. Give it to God. Teach me how to love. Yes. 
teach me, God, to love unconditionally and to make it a lifestyle. No matter what a person may do to me, no matter how they make me feel, that I will continue to love. This is the Valentine's Day message. Uh-huh. To love is God love. God loves me, therefore I love you. Because I understand and I'm established in the love of God. I want you to go ahead. Everyone bow your heads and begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I thank you, God. Forgive us, oh Lord God. When we win in our own way. Forgive us, oh Lord God, when we have not trusted you and love as you have commanded us to love. Establish your love in our heart, God. Change our hearts, God. That, oh Lord God, we would represent you in everything that you do, Father. And everything we do, Lord God, that we would be an example of your love. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for our comforter, advocate, our intercessor, our counselor, our strengthener, the one who stands by us. Thank you, Lord God, that he would teach us all things. And that he would help us on this road to learn. And so, Father, we thank you. And we give you all the honor and glory. Amen. Amen.